I just got this letter in the mail. It's from the Selective Services, which is the military. And they're like, hey, join all of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? They got all my personal information. I'm like, how y'all get my date of birth, social security number, and all of that, you know? So. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> I just made that for you, homie. What's cracking? We're cleaning up the new crib. I just moved in here. Got the brand new mic in the house, the headphones. Got this letter in the mail that I'm very curious about. Looking to find out some more information about this here. And you know, the only way we can do that is the only way we do best. It's through the music, baby. Got my homeboy Glenn Scott in the booth. We're going to be mixing down these tracks for y'all and putting our message through the music. That's that's what I do. That's what we do. So what Youth Against War and Racism is trying to do, and what other organizations across the country are trying to do, is every time the recruiters show up to your lunchroom or to anywhere to set up a counter-recruitment table to say what they tell you, you shouldn't always trust that. Here's the other side of the story. Reality is, less than a third of the students who sign up thinking they're going to get college money actually end up receiving it. Can I ask a question to everybody in here? Have y'all ever got a letter in the mail from the military? Yes. Yeah. Everybody got that? Because we're a working class high school and because we're not, you know, we're not wealthy and we're just severely targeted and because of that we're, we are losing a lot of students to the military because of the wrong reasons. The counter-recruitment movement is just trying to convince young people not to join. If enough young people don't join the military, they can't continue this war in Iraq. There's two sides to every story. We wanted to get another point of view. We, we're, not, we're not out for trying to harass people and we'll pressure them into doing anything they don't want to do. Mm. Our job as recruiters are to find the people who are actually interested in the United States Army. Right. So when they get the call, the phone call, or they get the, the somebody, you know, a recruiter knocking on the door, mm -hmm. it's just us trying to find people out there who are interested in joining. Right. The No Child Left Behind Act was an act that was brought up to, um, if you notice, there's a lot of kids that get hooked up on the streets and they're dealing drugs and, and, and doing all sorts of stuff they shouldn't be doing or they're flunking out of school, they're not doing that. I know, I was homeless when I was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. um, I, I lived my whole life. For 10 years, I was broke, dead broke, and poor, and everything, and I needed something in my life mm. to um, help me a little bit better. And mm. I had a, you know, at the time I had a uh, three-year-old son. Um, 15? I was 15. I moved out of my house when I was 15 years old. I didn't have a house for almost two years. I lived on, basically lived from friend to friend to friend, bouncing mm. between places. This mm. act was provided to the United States military and army um, so that public offices would be able to release the information on students that are still in school mm -hmm. um, and things like that so that we are able to contact them to better teach them about the army. But the schools are left powerless to do anything about that because if they push the recruiters out, if they say you can't come here, they lose federal funding. And that's all what No Child Left Behind has done. I'm just sick of you know, the lies that they have told people in the past and are still telling people. Do military recruiters really lie to kids? We wanted to find out. This is how we're going to do the setup. We're going to take one of these video cameras here, right? Mini DV. So it's going to go under here. Blam, so she ain't going to see that. Unless she's smart enough. We're going to take the camera that you're viewing me on. We're going to put that in that box. Coming out that peephole, we asked the same question to two different recruiters. Corporal Holiski and another recruiter that we caught on a hidden camera. Here's what they said. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. This guy out of school. And it's Get September. Water's fine. Water, I got orange juice. Can I go platinum? <laughs> can I do it? Can I sell a platinum album? And like, get out? If I, like, seriously though. In the army? No. Like, if I, yes. In the army, you want to sell a platinum record? Yeah, but, but that's what I'm into. So what you're, you're saying, just like skip the army and want to get out and go do that? That's what you're saying? Oh, yeah, kind of just want to. You joined the army for three years, right? Mm -hmm. And after one year, you decide you don't want to do it anymore and you just want to go platinum and, and you're going to get out. 
there's consequences for your actions for breaking your contract with the army. I don't know, man. You know, I might want to freaking make an album and then go platinum. <laughs> you can do that. Oh, and there's not. ways to get out. I mean, if you're in the army and all of a sudden you come on to a whole bunch of money, mm -hmm. you can get out of the army reserve. As a non-combat MOS, you support the actual people who are in combat if mm -hmm. they go to Iraq or anywhere in the world. So you could still possibly foreseeably go to Iraq. Right. It doesn't mean you won't. <clears throat> no, I'm kind of used to the civilian life. All right. You know, I got um, brothers and sisters and other people I, I would like to be around. Well, you're still going to be around them. I've been in the Army Reserves for eight years, and I've been here almost the whole entire time. When people think of, you know, oh, you're going to be deployed, oh, this and that. Um, not all deployments mean that you go to Iraq. I went to Germany. How was that? It was awesome. Uh, if you break a wrist mm -hmm. and, you know... I did it twice, though. You did it twice. If it's still in good shape and condition, yeah. the doctor says there's nothing wrong with you. Right. Your doctor says there's nothing wrong with you, and the doctor up at the military entrance processing station right. concurs that. Right. You can probably still get into the Army. So this is from wrist. Right, but twice. that's... that's But <laughs> it doesn't affect you at all. And that's something that, nope, never happened to me. Because okay. the doctor would get, would get stupid, and then he wants medical documents. Two different recruiters, two different stories, and lots of points of views. And we said we was going to give y'all a song at the end, too, though. So, here you go. Hey, Glenn, kick that for him, man. Nobody's knocking on their door saying, you're going into the United States Army. Right. Again, that's ultimately their decision. Their choice. It's their choice. Right. You say no, you say no. It's as simple as that. Taking advantage of people because they're not, you know, up to standards, you know, socially or economically is, is wrong. And I want it to stop in my high school. See right here, this was a snippet for y'all, but next time we're gonna come back and go even deeper. Uh-uh.